everybody, it's me, Nate, a.k.a. Devil Dog, and I'm back with another game review. Before I get started, I first of all want to let you all know, make sure to stay tuned to my channel on October 13th, this coming October 13th, for the official release of my movie, The Wellborn. I'm sorry, I gotta plug it, because after all... <laughs> I made it with no money. Hopefully, y'all check it out. It's a psychological horror film, and it's actually not that bad. Um, you know, can you make a movie with no budget? Well, stay tuned for October 13th, and you'll see what I can do with uh, my limited capabilities. It's actually pretty good. But now on to the game review. This is a game review for the PlayStation 4 version of Inertial Drift. That's right. Now, you, ever, you ever heard the... Hey, hey, Steve. Yowza. You ever heard of Inertial Drift? No, I never, never heard of it. <laughs> Neither no. <have> I. <laughs> That's right. This game came out of nowhere. It was originally um, launched on, uh, I think, uh, September 11th of 2020 for the PlayStation 4, the Nintendo Switch, the Xbox One, and Microsoft Windows. It was uh, published by P-Cube. P-Cube. <laughs> That's a hell of a name, P-Cube, and um, developed by Level 91 Studios. Now, what exactly is Inertial Drift? Well, it is a 90s-style retro racer. It has arcade-style racing where your main control gimmick with this is um, you use both analog sticks to control your race car. Now, what I mean is you normally have your left analog stick to turn the vehicle, but the right analog stick is solely dedicated to your drift mechanism. So, basically, imagine being able to not control your vehicle at all with the left stick, barely, until you use your right stick to kick in with the drift. That's really the best way to describe this game. Um, honestly, um, and it's kind of odd at first. And at first you're like, well, this is stupid. You start playing it and it's really not that bad. It's not great, but it's not that bad when you combine the two together. Naturally, your trigger button on the top is your gas. Your other one is your brake. And the analog sticks, the one is to move the, the, you know, the vehicle. And the other one is for the drift. And uh, different vehicles are actually different, you know, control setups. I'll get in that in a minute. Now, the thing about this game also is it's like a cell shaded art design. And I'm not a fan of cell shaded games if they're not done in the right way. This is okay, but visually it's not the most appealing game out there in what I've seen. And it does consist of several different game modes you can play on this game. Uh, first up is a story mode where you get to play as seven different characters as they're trying to go through and uh, do the Summer Grand Prix um, event. Um, now, it's told through all these like paper, cardboard cutout, um, animated pictures. They're not animated. It's like a, like a drawing of a character. And there's no voices and it's very generic, but I do give them credit for at least trying to add character to the characters they have in the game. But other than that, it's just an excuse to go through different races. That's all that is. Next up is a, move no, a mode known as Challenges, which pretty much uh, allows you to un unlock different cars. And there are different challenges you do by either getting enough points in a race, uh, doing like beat the clock, uh, or uh, uh, beating a ghost racer, or time trials. And that's really about it with that. Next up is an arcade mode where all the tracks are unlocked right from the start and you can basically play um, to do the ghost modes, the timer modes, the race modes and the dual modes on them and that's really about it for the arcade mode and then you have Grand Prix mode which is a set of different races and clusters and groups that you have to do to complete to move on to the next group of races. Now one thing I did notice about this game I do have to give credit where credit is due the different cars that you unlock do seem to actually have different stats in terms of their controls. Now, what I mean by that is normally you're like, okay, this car drives faster than this car. This one handles a little better. But a lot of them have like a personality to them. Now, what I mean by that is like one car in order to drift, you just normally hold the analog stick. Well, another car in order to drift, you have to like double tap. And they have certain things like this uh, that makes each vehicle that you drive actually make you have to relearn how to drive with each of these cars. And it is 
kind of neat that each of the vehicles does handle differently enough with the different tweaks in the controls uh, set up in order for you to race in the cars correctly, uh, but not really enough to really make it you know, worthwhile. Now, the last thing they have in this game is the classic online mode. The problem is, I can never find anybody to play. I literally waited for hours on this game to find one freaking person to play. And there's nobody playing this game. Probably because nobody's ever heard of it. I mean, I can't blame anybody. Who ever heard of initial inertial draft? It sounds like something like if you eat too many tacos at Taco Bell and you're in on the toilet. Oh, I'm suffering from inertial drift. Ah. I mean, seriously. So I was not able to test the, quote, net code of this game because I can't find anyone online to play the damn thing with. Uh, the last thing is a split screen mode, which I did test out with a friend. And it worked fairly good. But once again, with most split screen modes, it shrinks you down. It's hard to see. But other than that... It's a functional game. I'll give it that. It has above, you know, slightly below average graphics. I, I mean, uh, but the gameplay is rather, you know, poor. I've had certain instances where there was some slowdown, no real screen tearing or anything. And when you first fire the game up, fortunately, even though it does have a day one patch, it installs it super quick and the game loads super fast. So this isn't a game that's going to take you hours to install before you can play it. So I will give it that. Um, but honestly, it's just visually not that appealing. And with 20 different tracks that you can race on, most of them are forward and reverse versions of the same track. There are some that are from like point to point races, which are nice. Uh, but it always seems like almost like it's like a generated track as you're racing it. I, I, I'm, I don't know how to explain that. It just doesn't seem like you don't get to see the track that you're racing on. And I think that's one of the main problems since you don't have a little mini map that you can see what you're doing when you're actually racing. So I think that's kind of one of the detriments of this. It just comes off as a budget title. Really, it does. And the music is generic. It has this weird thing where it like repeats over and it's not even done well. Um, like I said, there's no voiceover work, none at all. No animation in the characters. It's like like just like an animated, you know, just a drawing of a character. It looks like a cardboard cutout. Uh, uh, honestly, I mean, uh, the, the functions of this game are okay. It does work. It is a sound title other than some slight hiccups, but it just doesn't bring anything to the table that's unique. And the dual stick idea of using one analog stick to control your drift, while it's a novel idea and it is cool, I just don't think they implemented it right. Now, if you actually had better control with your left stick to control your vehicle, there were some races where I, as a test, I let off the left stick and just drove with the drift stick. And I was able to beat the damn race that way. And that just made me think, it's like you didn't really think this game through to have a proper control setup for the vehicles. And, and like I said, the looping audio, which seems like the same song over and over again. Um, honestly, I'd have to say, other than the fact there's 16 different vehicles that you have in this that do have a very unique feel and control to them, uh, how you control them with your analog stick to actually do the drifting, the game itself just comes off as an odd lot brand generic version of a, um, you know, a twin stick shoot in Need for Speed with a cell shaded animation. I mean, take the cell shaded animation and dumb it down from, like, you say, um, Borderlands and combine it with Need for Speed and force you to have worse control with the left stick and more control with drifting with the uh, right stick. And that's basically what inertial drift is. It just comes off as a budget title. And for the price, I think it's like $20 on Switch. But they actually want $39.95 for this game on PlayStation 4. And I would have to say, if you have a chance to rent it, go ahead and rent it. It's not going to hurt anybody to play it. I mean, seriously, I do feel that the people at, at what, 91, level 91 games did try to make an okay game. And I could see them getting a little money from, you know, something. But in the end, I would have to say definitely rent this, but don't buy this game. This game... It's not shovelware, but it's not 
crap either. It's weird. It's like they tried. They honestly tried with this title, but they failed, and it just comes off as like a generic hodgepodge of pretty good, pretty good ideas, but just not done correctly. You know, and, and in the end, with the generic aspect of this 90s era style, retro style, the self-shaded animation, the lack of any sort of good variety in music, the lack of any sort of voices, any sort of animation in your characters or your cardboard cutout characters, the fact that most of the levels are ho-hum and aren't really visually appealing, I would have to say other than a generic hook of using a right analog stick to actually make you be able to drift your vehicle, I would have to say hands down, pass on inertial drift. This game, while it's not a massive turn, it still stinks, if you know what I mean. And if you really want to play it, just wait for a couple days. I'm sure it'll show up in the Walmart part, you know, markdown bid for about $1.99. This was Nate, a.k.a. Double Dog, and I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this video. Please leave in the comments below. If you play, please leave in the comments below if you've played of Inertial Drift or if you ever heard of this game. Uh, make sure to give me a thumbs up if you like this video and leave some comments that I can respond to. And remember, I always end my videos by saying, have fun, play hard, and remember people, the devil is in the details and the value is not in Inertial Drift. Peace out until next time.